somewhere. Please. Get you on the right on, right on. We're good. Everybody, Maggie, Maggie, thank you, my darling. Woo! Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Yeah. All right. Woo. Hope you guys have had a fantastical week. Um, very magical and wonderful. Uh, guys, what about your week? How's your week been here, um, Faye? Here at welcome oh, everybody to our fabulous pod dog virtual good. Let's throw it to you, <laughs> Faye. <laughs> My week's been pretty good. Very busy, lots of cool events going on, and yeah, just mm -hmm. continuing, keeping on, keeping on. Definitely. <laughs> nice. How about Johnny? you, Johnny? It's been uh, busy with work and everything, but uh, new projects and just uh, really uh, trying to bury myself in my work here. But excited to be here and uh i like that this is monday because my mondays at work are pretty crazy so this is a great way to wind <laughs> down and talk with my friends and our and our listeners or viewers or i don't know what you i guess both but uh i'm excited <laughs> to talk to you guys and, and uh you know see what see what the news is for for all our usual topics so yeah awesome. all right well fantastic and usual and unusual topics um so yeah, we got a little mixture today, hopefully a little robot, little AI, a little meta, a little space, all that kind of stuff. Do want to start off with this, now look at this. Could you look at this? We have this this um, celebrity in our presence here. Let's take a look at this here. Don't play with Faye or she will be your nightmare. Oh, so no. this, this guys, um, many of you know this <laughs> and those of you who don't. So I... Um, <laughs> So I, I've got this lovely haunt called Pandemonium of Fear. It's basically something I started in alt space and we brought it over. Um, and of course, D and, uh, you know, and uh, Divine, I call her D, you know, uh, Draculas and, uh, you know, Faye. And I, we were original alt spacers back in the day, everybody being a part of that. And um, had it last year, uh, had a pop up here, kind of like a short, like a, a teaser in here for a few days uh, last year. And then... Uh, we have the uh, the main haunt that was in VRC last year, and Jem was uh, part of that also with us over there, which was amazing. And um, she was kicking ass and taking names. And so, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're doing? Um, this the haunt has always been by the community for the community, and what we are doing is we were going to bring some worlds in here that are not going to actually work so we will be having an informational meeting on saturday this coming saturday and going to talk about what we're looking for we're hoping the community here will want to be involved uh because we're looking for folks to build some really creepy scary worlds for us some creepy avatars uh looking for people who want to act in this you can either be involved in patrons i mean i will i will put you in in different spots or if you're a little scared but still want to be involved we can also so have you be like an ambiance actor where you're kind of quiet, but you creep around, stare at people and freak them out and stuff like that. So there's something for everybody. And um, just come to the meeting if you can. Uh, if you cannot and you still want information, then then hit me up for that. But it's going to be this coming Saturday at 2 p.m. Pacific time in the afternoon. Um, and hopefully, uh, please pass it on because we'd love to make sure everyone gets uh, gets over here. And I'll be posting something probably in the in the space makers um, area of the um, banter uh, thingy so that we could go yes. ahead and, and get the word out. Um, the idea here, guys, is going to probably be the possibly either the last week of September or the first weekend of, or the week of October. Um, we are going to be having some. Um, availability hopefully for the uk situation because the one at vrc is going to be on friday and saturday nights i only do this for two hours at a time because i respect everyone's got their schedules and stuff like that and everybody can usually fit in a couple of hours um so i'll give you more information on saturday but it is so much fun you have you make friends you get to scare the living shit out of people which is so much fun believe me it's amazing and it is just awesome <laughs> Faye, do you have anything you want to add <laughs> oh, no, I'm just saying this is an experience that everybody should have at least once. It may be, it may be something that you've never thought of trying and getting into, but it's incredible. And you get to meet a lot of really cool people along the way and spend some great time doing some fun things. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Johnny, anything you want to add? I would just say that the group and the effort combined and put forth by everybody was simply amazing. 
from the actors to the mods to the world builders it's really quite the effort to see and i think it's something groundbreaking that we can all do in here and everyone can sort of enjoy whether you're a part of it or just visiting is something that uh is really cool and uh it's halloween so you know draculus likes everything there now christmas i don't want to hear about it, i know right that's my favorite holiday um jim you want to add anything to that um, I know a lot of people already have asked me and talked about the um, scheduling, but, you know, Cycle is really good about that because even though it might run two nights, you might just be able to do it for only one night. So that is something that mm -hmm. people have come to me about. So, but it's mm -hmm. excellent. Yeah. I enjoyed it. It was my first time and I had so much fun, met so many mm -hmm. awesome people. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Oh, yeah. You had one of the best mazes, too. I mean, <clears throat> and guys, if anybody wants to take a look at any of the uh, Haunt Worlds from last year in VRC, we will be using some more of them again this year. Let me know, and we can head on over. Uh, maybe we could go as a group sometime. That would be kind of cool. And, um, you know, people <laughs> want to check it out. We can get into a few of the worlds and kind of see what's there. Divine, uh, besides uh, Johnny having this amazing cathedral uh, that he got for us in there, Divine made this really amazing. She, my God, she kept adding things without telling me oh. and surprised me with cool stuff all the time. Dee, do you want to talk uh, about any of that experience um i'm sorry hold cool. on a second let me catch <laughs> okay. my head for a second yeah yeah that's <laughs> fine it's floating and also, guys, up in the hair right now <laughs> you're just talking about me all the Ooh, if i were in dungeons of eternity okay. i'd be like Whoosh, with that flame oh, in oh head. My goodness. <laughs> 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 um i i loved it like i I felt like I was included and it was just amazing. Everybody was awesome and the fun uh, from it. I don't know. It was just amazing. And the way they talked about my maze was amazing. Huh. Get it? <laughs> Anyways, there. Um, walk up, walk up, walk up. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, it, it really made me like feel like I was, you know, wanted and needed. And like, I, I've never been like that before really in my life so y'all are oh. awesome so mm. yeah 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 that, that brought out a you are really awesome. strange part about me yeah. like i've never really <laughs> acted or anything mm. i've thought about it i'm like i could be an okay actress but i've never really done it so to jump in it like that and to have y'all give me so much praise was just a, it made my head well, you're incredible <laughs> well deserved and Can razor I was a part of it too razor is a part of it too razor is incredible yeah. um and I you know and the fun about thing me. about it is is the video that you know uh, we had a you know a video um for alt space of course and then also we did a video for last year and we can show that Faye, can we show those on saturday to show both of those to people i could show them now oh my god seriously yeah yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Just oh show my it god now. let's yeah. show the alt space one first and then while i one. get it ready Listen, jim yeah. did you have something you wanted to oh. say yeah i did <laughs> i actually worked at divine's um <laughs> in divine space that that one and it was excellent she was always adding on and it was just so much fun and i wasn't even left alone at the end of the maze because i had a friend Behind mm. <laughs> Aww. Aww. And I had to say goodbye to him. I feel like I need to be singing some Muppet Show songs or something. Oh my oh god, my this is heartwarming. I can't stand this. Um, no, yeah, it, because guys, D, D she not only is an actress in it, an actor, but uh, here's the cool thing about it is that she also built that amazing maze, which is crazy. So you can do more than one thing, guys. Um, oh, here we go. Okay, this is the Thank one from you. All Space. This is me and Faye. Uh, can I just stop for a second before you do it, Faye? Guys, this yes. is, uh, let me tell you something about this. This was planned out. We started filming, got halfway through it. Then suddenly we lost locations. We lost people. A lot of things happened. Life happened, and, and we had a few traumas and things that happened. So I had to pivot quickly, and what I had written, and we started filming, I had to talk, and I literally just jumped my ass in there one night. I'm like, Faye, let's go, and we <laughs> improvised the shit out of this thing, yeah, and Johnny came in, and, nice. and, and like in the golden hour, he he like put this video together. He did some of the filming here. He did it all. He was incredible. So this is all yep. like... This place is so cool. Look at these avatars. May I have your attention, please? Oh, you have the long one? <laughs> that was oh, cute. We gotta go. I wanna go. Please make your way to the front of the 
Okay, you know what? Stay here and look oh. around. I'll go get the car and bring it around front, and then I will just text you when I'm out there, okay? Okay. Where am I? Why am I here? What? <laughs> yeah, this is the 60 second teaser, guys. We have a three minute version, but this is the short version. Oh my god. Remember, hey. a couple days, guys. Faye, hey, what are you doing down here in the museum's basement? You're staying here forever, Faye! You're not going anywhere! You're on fire! Oh no, oh no. <laughs> My favorite part is blood squelch. Wow. Now, before wow. you go on to the next one, let me tell you guys a couple things. Uh, again, that was last minute. That room at the end... Uh, literally, I'm like, oh my god, we need something. And Faye's like, here! And she throws me this room that is super bright. It's got all her Disney gallery. And it's so cute and sweet. And I'm like, what? And so <laughs> oh, she no. darkened it for me. <laughs> I threw in torches, and I went in, and I took that one room, and I bloodied the shit out of it. I threw in some corpses, all this kind yeah. of stuff. And so literally this is what i'm talking about guys like last minute even you know what and that's the 60 second version we got a whole three minute version which flushes out the story more but <laughs> with regard to that i mean literally this is what happens this is the people who have been involved in this from the beginning too people who are, are coming on board whoever commits to this if you come on board with this project my whole thing is that your family this is not i don't call it my haunt my project it's ours and here's the thing about it once you do something as a part of this you be involved in this if you love it and if you have a good time, we have a good time, we all enjoy each other, you are automatically welcome back the next year. You don't have to audition again. You don't have to, hey, can I build something? You just be like, oh, hey, I had some, you know, a couple of people come up to me in VRC and they're like, oh my God, psycho, can I build something for this? And I'm like, yeah, have at it. So it was really amazing. And uh, and again, more information, I don't want to keep talking about it, but it's just, oh my God, I'm so proud of everybody. Okay, 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 okay. This is from last year. <laughs> all right, here we go. That's divine in the red hair. louder, unfortunately. I wish I could. Monsters catch up to us. <laughs> oh I know, Anda, God. but we can't leave without finding Nia. We have to rescue her from that evil circus. So oh good. my God, it was so oh. awful. I never would have left her if I had the choice. When Faye got me out, we that tried to go last back, year. but we couldn't. We had no choice. Year before they were chasing life. us. We won't abandon her. They gave her life to try and save you both, and we won't let her death have been for nothing. But <laughs> we need to be careful. Creatures are everywhere. Please excuse the hound that goes through the actual shelving. Direction was not followed. <laughs> it's, um, it, it's magical. It's a magical right? hound, yeah. 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 No hounds were harmed in the uh, filming. <laughs> <laughs> so she's trying to find Dee, her sister. And they're both there to find their other sister.
<laughs> we like what scares you. <laughs> wow, that was amazing. So very fun. So my canna who who was that gal up there she is a she's a professional actor she's um incredible uh everybody was amazing in that you see d d was just so good in that so guys here's the the point the point is it's just so much fun and we really really enjoyed doing this and so we just really would love to have people who want to come and be a part of this and really start to you know create some fun and some amazingness so just a heads up and if you guys know anybody else who might be interested have them come to the meeting and like i said if they can't get to the meeting have them you know have them get in touch with me um but otherwise okay so thank you for hearing about that that was really much fun we got to be a lot of monsters i recycled people in there we were all dressed as monsters also in there the only thing is you can't see the video to and from Mars with less lag and delay, right? So anybody's on Mars and they're feeling they want to watch a little pandemonium of fear video, they can whip that puppy right on up. And there you go. <laughs> so this is really awesome. This is a very, um, there's a link called First Light, they call it. It's, this whole project is like a very successful establishment of this. And using this, they're going to be able to send scientific information, um, streaming video, HD data, all that kind of stuff. And it's going to mm -hmm. take a lot less power than a bunch of the radio waves. And what's also cool is that it's going to be harder to intercept, which is good. So all those aliens out there that want to listen in and eavesdrop, it's not going to happen. Um, <laughs> the other thing, too, is now, and this is what I didn't uh, kind of trying to understand how this works. So what they were saying is that the data bits are entered basically where they start, like here, whatever on Earth. And then they need to be decoded um, on the other side. and what they did was they had a for this they had the spacecraft and the telescope talking to each other and these were both hurtling through space at the same time they were doing this which was amazing and they said that the the cool thing about this is the spacecraft was called the psyche basically spelled psycho with an e which is my name in a, <laughs> uh, in, a, in, a in a in a mental health thing that i'm involved in kind of figured psycho wasn't going to be appropriate for that so <laughs> it's psyche and so i thought that was kind of cool yeah, okay. that's why, right? Let's I don't want to be involved in the uh, mental health stuff over there without, uh, you know, with psychos. Just didn't seem appropriate. So I just slapped an <laughs> E on instead of the O. And I there can you go. get what you're going there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah. And it also worked. Look up the goddess. It's pretty cool. So, guys, <laughs> here's the thing. This reminded me a lot of, what's that show we were watching? The Body uh, Problem? Is that what it's called? The Three Body Problem. Third Body Problem. Okay. Something like that. Have, if you guys have seen this, jump up and down. Has anyone seen this? Yeah, Razor. Okay. Nice. I so, have body problems, oh. but they're not. I've not seen that show. <laughs> Do you have more than three body problems? Not that, one. Not that kind. Here? I only have two that I know of, but I'm going to the dentist tomorrow, so I may oh. see what he says. Oh, <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, so That's what's no really fun. interesting about this show? It's kind of creepy, but the the premise of this show is that. Um, Oh, is that they are sending uh, from from here? They're sending out, you know, into the world. You know how we're we're doing this. We're sending out into the universe the messages and 
you know, things like that and time capsules and things like that, trying to reach some intelligent life out there. Well, the, in this, in this uh, show, that actually happens. And there is a response that's given back to someone that basically says, do not respond to this. I received your message. We are a race that you do not want us coming there. I'm a pacifist. You're lucky I'm the one that got your message. Just telling you stop sending and do not respond to this. So what happens, of course? The human of responds course. to it, right? Yes. And so Always. that starts a whole thing about the fact that these aliens are trying to come here because they're, they're is it their planet's dying? I think they're, is that what's happening? I, I forgot. Oh, they usually, usually like to terraform us in these things. So yeah, that sounds exactly. about right. Yeah. I've only seen so, one episode, but yeah. A one? Oh, one? Oh, well, I'll have to yeah, watch for so spoilers far. then. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, it's incredible. And what happens is they find out that it's going to be 400 years until they get to Earth. But meanwhile, they're already kind of here in some form. And what's really amazing is the way they communicate is via VR. There is this really mm -hmm. cool silver VR headset. And the people are it, it arrives at their home, in their, in their home. Like, how do people get in here type of thing? And you take it out of the box, and it's this silver thing, and you put it on your head, and you're instantly transported into VR, and it is most realistic. It's like literally you are transported it there. So it's incredibly cool. realistic. Yeah. Yes. So that yes. was a huge draw on that, too. So this kind of reminded me of that. Um, what do you guys feel about this whole thing about reaching out, you know, with, with hey, we're here. Come find us. It's very oh, interesting because I think that Hi, Michael, what you, you see... I think what you see here is you got a couple different things, and I do think that is a more efficient way to communicate via the cosmos is with light, but without getting too nerdy, as you know, I, I like ham radio and stuff like that. So kind of, it's interesting, you know, the 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 spectrum of radio wave it tends to be a bit more noisier than the spectrum of light. But then again, there's a spectrum of light too. So are you talking ultra? So there's all kinds of, it's complicated, but I do think it's more an efficient way to communicate in space without any signal degradation. But beyond mm -hmm. that, uh, going back to the alien thing, I think that, uh, with the radio waves, I think those radio waves are just getting to our neighboring uh, galaxy just now. Our first radio emissions from our civilization. We won't get into whether there were civilizations before us or whatever, but those mm -hmm. ones that we've created are just getting to the next galaxy right now. So, yes, they are getting those signals. And you bring mm -hmm. up a good point. It would take a, a long time for them to get here. Um are they nefarious? Are they wanting to help? You know, who knows? You know, that that's something that I'm very kind of concerned with. But uh, the way I see it is our civilization is but a blink of an eye in the whole of what's out there. So you may I think what will happen is it's more of a historical thing. I think when alien species look at this signal, they're looking at it from like, a wow, this is what happened. Right. This happened a long time ago. And a lot of times you look at, I forgot what it's called, but they say that most civilizations end up destroying themselves before they get too big or they leave the planet. So I think as an alien listening to another signal, right, if we got a signal from somewhere else, what would we do about it? It would be too far. By the time we get there, who knows what's even there? So there's a lot of questions, but... My question is, does it, it kind of looks like the Apple vision, this one. I saw that. I haven't seen the show, but I saw, but I'm wondering what the mm -hmm. stats are of this VR headset in the show. Oh my God. Did they get into that? Or may have to they watch look it? like the most amazing resolution. I'll tell you that. It's, it oh incredible. my God. Hmm. It's yeah. true, right? And it's interesting what you said too about, uh, about, uh, you know, what we, we do with ourselves here. Part of the reason the answer that that person gave to them is, I, and I don't remember verbatim, but it was basically they're saying, you know, just take care of yourselves and, and, and whatever and, you know, don't bother. And basically what she wrote back was, we can't take care of ourselves. So it's like, <laughs> oh my God, you know. Very so true. now, Faye, you've gotten through episode one. Um, but I mean, yeah, how do you one... feel about this whole thing about reaching out to the universe? I mean, it's oh, kind of scary in a way. It is. It is. It is scary. But. There's definitely things that we've seen in the past where they've talked about doing that, sending a signal, much like the 
story that you started with where we're sending, you know, lasers or, or waves or whatever, and that can contain a ton of data and it can contain our history and our, our um, experiences, TV shows, things like that from our past that can be mm -hmm. sent on to the aliens. And that, that is something that they've talked about doing, just sending a broadcast of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then yeah. being able to pick well, that up. But does it, I mean, okay, let me ask you guys, uh, if anyone has a comment on this, jump up and down, but I want to know what you think about this, because I want to know if anyone feels a little freaked out about this. I mean, yes, it's great <laughs> if we could find some benevolent aliens who would give us the cure for cancer and everything like that. But the truth of the matter is, what if we come across some mean guys, you know, what if we come across these yeah. horrific horror stories, you know, like that? Disclaimer, uh, a a any species listening, uh I want them to know that I welcome them and I will do any tasks for them, oh, much whatever. like our AI companions. I uh, oh, I support God. the new aliens that may be listening Stella. to us, but go yeah. ahead. Uh -huh. Okay, I got your support <laughs> right here, buddy. Oh, my God. All right, Razor, what do you want to say, honey? Oh, I've seen that show. I, I, well, I, I haven't really got too much into it. Like I'm in a, I think probably mm -hmm. the second or third episode myself. What are um, your thoughts? I got on to that? the, well, I got to the part where she was sending mm -hmm. the signal to the sun. I should okay. put bring too many spoilers that's okay. into no, it. No, no, that's not a spoiler. Um, that won't ruin anything. Okay. But I really, I really feel like going about it like, oh, we need help. All this other, unless you really like need in dire help you know <laughs> like you should that's not some of the mm. first things you should be saying to extraterrestrials you know no like people no. are from another you know another world like i mean start off with hey how's it going you know that seems you, know, <laughs> you know like hey you know like she was not a good ambassador stuff about each other or figure out stuff about <laughs> you know, culture and all of that before getting into, hey, come on over here and fix us, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> so no explicit images sent to the aliens, no uh, specific appendage <laughs> pictures to be sent to them? We, should put, okay. we, we can put they the Penelope Fear video in there. That At least that'll keep them thinking, oh, maybe we don't want to toss with those people, right? I don't know. Well, I maybe, mean... maybe we'll pass on sending the VR or... headsets to that speed. <laughs> Or yeah. they would see that, they would see that, you know, pandemic horror stuff, you know, and be like, oh, we better be prepared. And then they bring all their guns. You know, you don't want, you don't want oh, no. everything like that, you know? Yeah, that's true. We don't want to do that. Um, but it was, I, I really, I really liked that they had the whole VR um, mm -hmm. headset in, in this mm -hmm. show. Um, mm -hmm. I was thinking, you know, the resolution of that. I'm like, wow, I wonder, like, oh, how long man, it would take. For headsets to finally get to the point where it's like, ab like just absolute reality, you know. And I'm thinking, oh, God, oh I wonder yeah. if this would be like ten years in advance, you know. <laughs> Who knows? But yeah, it was pretty good. It's yeah. it's a good show. I'm excited to watch the rest. I'm gonna binge the yeah, heck me out too. Of that. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> you guys should, and definitely guys watch it for the VR aspect alone. The headset that the aliens send it to some people. Oh I man, I would just I love it. Love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> How did they send the headset if it takes some they is it like some sort you. of 3D printer? They oh, okay. don't they don't tell I would you imagine. Oh, yeah. in this box yeah. there's this there's this really fancy little oval box and it's uh, got your name on it like you know it, engraved on it and you open it up and there's this silver this silver thing and you just put it over your head and covers your eyes and that's no, in the back and then you, then you're there wild. like a crown almost. No charge. It must have already yeah. been here. <laughs> It must have been here no, for thousands no, of no, years. They, they must have they known weren't. it. Nope, 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 nope. It's going to take them 400 years to get I'm going to have to watch here. this. So you got to watch it. It's really yeah, well, interesting. They, and they do have, they do have a, they have convinced some, obviously a group of humans who have drank the Kool-Aid. And so they are, <laughs> there are some evil humans involved, but they, they help, uh, yeah. they help get their, their message to who it needs to go to. And also they get rid of the people that they no longer have a use for. So very, very interesting. Mm. But yeah, check it out, guys. It, it was it on Netflix? Yeah, I think it's on Netflix. Yeah, yeah it's Netflix. Netflix. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so speaking of space, sorry, my headset is just so I have a headache and I'm trying to adjust it. It's killing me. Um, oh, no. Does anyone so have a the... Netflix they could share with me? Oh wait, you can't do that anymore. 
<laughs> I yeah. But... Yeah. So Johnny's but... asking uh, openly if you would break the law for him. So please uh, contact him <laughs> separately from mm. the show. Uh, we do not condone any such things. Um... It's not affiliation. <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah. yeah it's not affiliated. <laughs> um, no, but um, so the uh, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration (NOAA) um, they basically have this space weather production uh, center um, in uh, prediction center. Sorry, in uh, Boulder, Colorado, and they keep an eye on things. You know, they do predictions and changes in climate, weather, oceans, coasts. They watch space, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently, we had a geomagnetic storm yesterday. It was the second highest level storm in their rating system. It was pretty, pretty huge. Um, oh, they wow. were saying that there could be, and, and also there's some some lingering effects until Wednesday, uh, could cause major disturbance in Earth's magnetic field, um, impact the infrastructure of media communications, um, and affect, uh, you know, even your telephone, you know, even your, your cell phone, all that kind of stuff. And mm-hmm. um, now, and I was look, I was, I was writing this down because I want to get this right, but I was kind of interested in this. And it said that uh, there is a coronal mass ejection, a CME, which is when a large cloud of plasma and magnetic and magnetic fields bursts from the sun's cornea, and it causes a uh, it causes a solar flare, and the electromagnetic radiation suddenly erupts from the sun, which is what a solar flare is. So this thing happened alongside a solar flare, and they said that it travels at the speed of light, which is basically means it impacts Earth as soon as it is noticed and seen. Like, literally, there's no time. From the time you see it, boom, it happened. It's done. It's wow. done. Yeah, it can last for hours, and um, they say that... Um, the solar winds also help to carry this stuff around and the solar winds are still elevated. They said now up through Wednesday and they think they're going to be more flares through Wednesday. Also, it could still impact technology, uh, GPS, um, you know, as well, uh, voltage control, things like that. But the cool thing is they said that it extends how far people can see the Northern lights. They said that people could see the Northern oh. lights. They can be seen as far out as Alabama. I mean, like it, Oh my gosh. Like, Isn't that cool? I- it well, is that, that happening well, tonight? Well, the Northern Lights tonight? So everybody is. I don't to see know. Them? I I there's no specific like on it. it. They just happened. said they just said that mm. it can happen. Well, they said through Wednesday though that it's this stuff's going on and through different Wednesday. levels. But they said that uh, that it can extend it the Northern Lights further, just that far. But it doesn't say when or if it will happen. It's just that it's possible to do it. That's um, cool. Can I'd you send that to here. me? Everybody yeah, yeah. should experience that if you can. Northern Lights are just it's, absolutely beautiful to see. Must be beautiful. And I think it's sort of concerning, yeah. too, when you talk about things we can avoid and disaster and gloom and doom. The two that mm-hmm. I'm most afraid of is is the, uh, the CME events with that. Uh, they're looking at models and ways to predict it, but there's really nothing we can do. And it's exactly like you said, it's like, we cannot plan for that. The other one is a gamma ray burst. The atmosphere mm-hmm. can only protect us so much, and that's what you're seeing with the northern lights is your atmosphere protecting us against that solar radiation. So wow. it's one of those things that it's very frightening, but uh, very uh, beautiful as well. So the only hope humanity huh. has of something very big like that is some sort of Faraday cage, and you'd have to be underground. <laughs> All the electronics are going to be fried, wow. and uh, yeah, you, oh you're going to want to make sure you got some food in the cupboard but i'm sure it's quite beautiful and uh i hope i'll be looking up i know yesterday i was treated to a beautiful moon i don't know if it was full or not but it was just so Aww. bright last night and uh mm-hmm. i did not see any uh by me I'm, I'm about as far south as you can get uh for mm-hmm. the well not that south i guess but i'm uh, right on the border so i didn't see anything but uh i'm gonna be looking tonight that's for sure yeah it was a full moon yeah. for mm-hmm. us as well Sorry. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, that's that. Um, here's the thing, though. I mean, the Northern Lights. I've always wanted to see those. Those are. Um, my mom grew up seeing those in Scandinavia, and um, it's one oh. thing I'd like to see before I before I die because it would hold a special mm-hmm. meaning for me. And that's why I really love the VR world. You know, I have some some wonderful friends who had built worlds for me in alt space. And what I always want in my worlds, I love glowy. Obviously, I love glowy, but I also <laughs> love water. I've got to have water in the world. Um, but also, you know, with Northern Lights, I'd like to have uh, also, like, I like a world with, like, gl- some glowy and then some Northern Lights and the water and all that stuff. Because um, 
I just mm -hmm. love that stuff. And I think that the Northern Lights are just beautiful. And people in VR have built some amazing worlds where I've seen Northern Lights and they've, they've been amazing. And didn't Claus and Christie build some stuff in Alt Space and they had a great rendition of the Northern Lights in their world, um, one of their worlds. Just amazing. I'm not sure if it was Claus and Christie or if that was um, Mr. Prime who had made the Aurora. I God, that was an amazing Oh, space. that's another one. No, no, that was that was him. But I think the other world, they had some um, a, a winter-like world. And, and mm. it's just beautiful. People are putting some good stuff in, into their uh, into their worlds. And anyway, I just love it. Um, but yes, <laughs> so the other thing I want to... Um, let's talk about uh, the 3S, which is what they're thinking of calling Meta's new headset that's coming out. So we know there's a <laughs> entry-level headset, basically, they're calling it coming out. It's basically supposed to be you know, like the, the Q2 plus in a way. And so there's been some more speculation. And as we know, a lot of this is all speculation, but they're saying that they're probably going to call it the, the Meta Quest 3S. Um, it's going to be about 200 bucks. They're still talking about whether or not it's going to have controllers. Uh, they really want to do some hand tracking stuff on them. But the point is so many things in the store, apps, games, things like that, you have to have controllers for them. So not including mm -hmm. controllers would not be the best thing. Um, but they're basically saying that it, they think that it's the body of the thing, the way it's built, it's going to look a little more angular and it's going to be thicker. And what's interesting in one of the, uh, the the photos that came out, so, you know, on the three, you've got your three sensors across the, the front. This one had three sensors in a triangle formation on either side, which was kind of interesting, like these little round sensors. Um the mixed reality sensors and they're thinking that um you know they're unsure if that's you know again this is speculation but you know sometimes this stuff's right when it comes out they're thinking they could announce it as early as june or wait until the meta connect in what is that october i think that's in october right mm -hmm. so, so uh they think the base model is going to be uh 128 and they could and they will also have a 256 version uh same display as the q2 which is 1832 by 1920 but they think that the um, the actual lenses may be pancake, but they could need to lower the cost and have the uh, what is it? is it Fresnel lenses? I think that they would have. Fren yeah. So, um, they're saying also that uh, you know they saw that there was a little Beat Saber logo, and if that's there, if that's true, and it's not just a little joke, they would have to have controllers because you you know. Well, here's true, the thing. Right? I have three initial thoughts on this my first one mm -hmm. is will it have the alien communication uh <laughs> sdk <laughs> on it so can i speak to the I aliens the yeah the okay well. the second thing is that when you release a headset with no controllers you i really think that they're responding to the apple vision pro and bumping up their hand tracking and that's why they they're are. more open mm -hmm. to this yeah they are. so that's mm -hmm. i think you're going to see a so lot better if you're going to ship something this day and age, yeah, you're going to have to have your, your hand tracking bumped up. Second thing, I really, 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 the number one thing, I don't even care what they do, just please no f for now, because that's the one thing I think that, that is limiting people from enjoying it. They need to have all of the IPDs. They need to have non for now. Otherwise, I think I'd rather honestly get the Quest 2 no matter what, mm -hmm, if that's mm -hmm. going to be the case, because at least you get the controllers. So I think right. that's their mentality is they're looking at improving that hand tracking and they got to do uh, the the pancakes. I, I hope they don't do for now. Well, what would be nice is if you could could use your, your Quest 2 controllers for this. You know, that mm -hmm. would be really helpful for people. But the thing, too, is that the, the for the Q2, as a matter of fact, so the, the Quest 2 is still a really great deal, especially now, because they're saying, first of all, I mean, you're mm -hmm. going to have three years of support has been promised, right? Boz was saying they'll support it at least for three years for sure. The app support is going to go at least till 2027. So you still at least will get a good three years of, of you know, out of this. Uh, and they're dropping the price, guys. It, here's the thing. They're thinking it's kind of clearancing out because the 256, that's out of stock at Meta. They just don't have the 256 anymore. So the 128 has been going on clearance. So in January, it dropped to 249, right, from 299 to 249. And now it just dropped again to 199. This is the cheapest you can get a brand new Quest 2 is for 200 bucks right now. And um, that's what they're thinking of doing. They think that it's kind of like clearancing it out in that sense, even though it will still mm. be supported. But they mm -hmm. want to make room for the next ones coming in. So, so if you guys, you know, if anybody is uh, in the financial situation and you need to get a new headset, you know, a Q2 now's the time. Two hundred bucks, and that is the cheapest it has been. And 
odds on it going down are really slim because that is a really good price for it. I mean, if it were to right, get to one forty nine, I'd be shocked. Bottom. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, so anyway, that's a heads up. Um, but you know what? Heads up is up here, but my dancing feet are down here. And I'm kind of feeling the need for a little bit. Yeah, Those are I'm dancing feeling feet down something. there. Those are my dancing feet. Really? Yeah. So I'm wondering if maybe there's something we could do. Because, oh, I'm falling off the edge. I got to move, y'all. I got to move. Dance break. Come on. Woo. Everybody, come join us out on the dance floor. It's dance break. <laughs> Come on up, Skyver, Zephy, Anguisher, Divine, Dawn, Down. Even our cameraman's here. Hey, Dad. <laughs> right on. Oh, look at that. I ended up way over here. Wow. <laughs> Come on back wherever you are. Oh, wow. You ended up way. way I did, over right? There. Did you was that an impressive dance move? Were you guys all impressed by my it moves? Was. <laughs> was that your moonwalk? <laughs> oh, but I'm bummed. That's really funny. I like that. I like that. <laughs> that's my three body problem walk. Three body. <laughs> oh my god, that's fantastic. Um so guys, let's talk about some AI stuff here because this stuff is really uh, interesting. So there is okay. a company called AI Zip. So they, along with some uh, universities and experts, created a system that allows AI tools to build other versions of themselves. Okay, that's terrifying. Oh. That's terrifying. So they're trying to Goody. say that... <laughs> so they, they can <laughs> mate now. Yeah, they can mate. That's literally. Oh so nasty. Literally. Oh Reproduce. Well, they're, say they're saying that the good thing is that this can lead to um, little smaller efficient models that can run inside objects. Little now, baby. check this out. Running shoes. They did running shoes. They could adapt to the runner's gait in real time, right? Mm -hmm. Or like helmets to filter out noise and things like that more efficiently. And it's uh, they're calling it fully automated AI design pipelines, what this thing's called. And it's... Um, basically development of an AI nano factory where millions of specialized models can be made with minimal human interaction, basically oh. generated and made by the AI. Um, this is the first step in transforming AI design, really, because it's, it's just insane. Uh, they're even thinking of putting them in clothes, in the fabric of clothes or in the bristles of toothbrushes. I mean, that's a little invasive, huh? but, you know. Wait, no, yeah. no, 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 no. What, what are you talking about? The, the AI nanofibers. They're thinking that they're going to, the AI builds AI, and then they're also, uh, the, the nanofactory that they're building, that's going to be run by AI, and they're going to be coming up with these little uh, AI nanos that they will be able to put in products like those running shoes. In our for the toothbrushes? Um, yeah, yeah. Like gonna, in the bristles, right? <laughs> I mean, I don't feel good about that. I don't, I don't feel good know. about that at all. Oh, that's no. weird. Okay. Because how many, listen, how many things can, can that get put into, right? If you have, you have some bad people who want to get hold of, who get hold of this technology, they can put that oh, in everything. Happen. You can be tracked and I mean, mm. everything of your life would be invaded if, if, if think well, about that. You what know, if, if they're not even happen. bad? What if, what if they're experimenting and it gets out? Like, this is like a virus or some kind of contagion. Mm -hmm, if they're not mm -hmm. careful, it can just get out. Like, it's no different. Like, it's literally, mm -hmm. it can be just like a virus. Yeah, 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 it could. Yeah, it can. Which wouldn't be surprising. Um, that's just, I don't know, that's just something that is a little um, a little intense with regard to that. Because they're saying, and this is, and of course they're trying, listen, I get it. People are trying to better humanity and trying to make things better. You know, runners are going to want to know their stats and all that kind of stuff. But I don't know. I mean, it's literally, it's like Big Brother, like to a thousand, right? To a thousand fold. I just... Yeah, I don't know. It's just there's something about it. What do you guys feel? Does anybody out there, Ark? What is what are your thoughts on this? I'm gonna regurgitate something that like countless people have said like for the past decade now, and actually longer. So the amount of you know things that 
you can now just with a click of a mouse or, you know, a tap of a screen or with AI now, just the amount of intrusion that you can just literally happen with just a click are the kind mm -hmm. of stuff that 40 years ago, it required like the police or the state to get numerous court orders and go through all these hurdles. I mean, the, the state had the power to do that. Now you can just literally click that away, you know, with the, you know, with just a tap. And I mean, to continue what you guys were saying, I mean, there's, it's just super creepy. There needs, I mean, you're absolutely right about the things about, you know, there's another side as far as like bettering humanity and there's, that is wonderful, but is it's been just a historical norm with humanity for all the good that something can do. There's almost always been that other side of the coin. Like, you know, the, the, the bad places it can go, you know, like nuclear power is great yeah. for, you know, you know, better clean energy, nuclear missiles, not so much. And I mean, AI and, you know, the level of intrusion, there's a lot of strong arguments for a lot of good that can be done and no one's going to dispute that. But like you said, I mean, it's just way too easy to surrender privacy to the point that there needs to be like what's been said many times is a digital bill of rights, you know, like, you know, we had mm -hmm. yeah. classic, you know, bill of rights mm -hmm. in the United States and most countries have analogs to that as well. There needs to be an international bill of rights that says, okay, you literally can't just give away your rights because none of us read those screens. I mean, I'm not saying this to throw banter under the bus, but I've never read the banter terms of agreements. Nobody does. And I mean, I think that you mm -hmm. guys are very honorable people, but what about the ones that aren't? You know, so, I mean, mm -hmm. just way too easy. And, this, and AI is just going to accelerate that even more and more. And I know that's probably the same place you guys were going with this. I don't have a good answer for that other than, you know, an international bill of rights, which would require the lawmakers actually to be technically competent, which and I'm not saying this to be a jerk. A lot of them, <laughs> even the ones that want to do right. Right. Because, yeah, I mean, yeah. even the ones who have yeah. sincere yeah. good reasons, they just don't have the technical competency. So, right, mm -hmm. right. I, I don't know the full solution to create that then. So I'll let you guys deliberate on that and everyone else weigh in too. The, but that's my thoughts. The thing of it is, I think, mm -hmm. and that's you bring up a huge point. Um, we are not ready as a society. I mean, in my country, we are voting. And I don't understand this properly, and I hope I don't offend anybody, but we're voting on whether we can have a gas stove or not in some states. True. So, and then also as a society, right? Like we would rather make money off of treating diseases than curing them. Is this mm -hmm. acceptable from a society with this amount of power with AI and all this other thing? And I'll just close it with any AI microbots. I am open to any tasks and anything you may need also. <laughs> Jesus. Whoever gets um, here first. Well, make sure. Does anybody does covered. anybody else have a thought on this? Just jump up and down. Besides kissing the AI and the aliens' asses. <laughs> we've had enough of that today. <laughs> yeah, I mean there's a lot. Uh Kitty, you have a thought? <laughs> I'm I just wanted to say like I think Ark has a good idea, but I also think um that I don't know that it would be possible for the entire world to come together on stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. Even like insofar as there are still unde under or undeveloped countries, is that the correct term? Um, that mm -hmm. may not have access to the technology that we have so readily available to us where we are to be in a place like this. Um, but there's just, I feel like all of this stuff is just changing faster then we can keep up with it to put these safeguards into effect that we need. And yeah. just even with the, the user license agreements, like Art mentioned, not reading them, not only do a lot of people not read them, but also the, they, they're very technical. So if you don't have that, that grasp or maybe, you know, on that kind of um, verbiage, you might just not even understand your what you're reading. If, even if you try to read it. Yeah. Right. No, that's true. That's very true. Um, does anyone have any other thoughts on that? There's, uh, we're getting close to the end of the uh, of the hour, but I do want to bring one more thing up. This is really also very creepy. Um, this falls along the lines of these things. So, OpenAI is going to give robots a brain to enhance robotic perception, reasoning, and interaction. Huh. So, uh. there is a company, AI robotics company called Figure. And their general purpose, you know, general purpose humanoid robots is basically what they were supposed to, you know, though, let's make some for industry. Let's do this. Well, they are going a little beyond this and they have funding. I mean, this is incredible. Uh, the people involved in this are companies and things. So Microsoft, OpenAI, NVIDIA, Intel, and Jeff Bezos on a personal level, not representing Amazon, but he himself has invested. Big, big they names. have funding above $2 billion in this, right? Whoa. And... 
they basically um there is it's what's called multimodality where ai models can understand and interact with more than just text because you know how originally chat comes out you put in some text and it gives you what you want or you put in the text to mid journey and it gives you the picture and everything well if you look at it gemini's uh, google uh, gpt4 those are already multimodal because you can input text code images video or speech and they can interpret them right and they're trying mm -hmm. to say that it's it's vital for the robot to be autonomous in the world and not need humans to write each task and all that kind of stuff. And so OpenAI has, <clears throat> they have their robot uh, figure, figure zero one, they call it basically. And the idea is that they want to bring um, commercial operation to robots right away. They want to get robots into people's homes. They want to get them into the community mm. also and things like that. With brains. Um, yeah, exactly. And th it's basically coming to where the robots are going to perform tasks that th has never been done before. Like we talked already about Eve, right? How Eve could right. could look into your, you know, can look into your cupboard and make some food for you, re a recipe based on what you have. We have the other robot learning to make a co make a coffee by watching a YouTube video and then turning around and and making coffee like just from that video, which is crazy. And so the thing about it is that it's kind of a it's kind of a judgment call i guess and and i'm kind of curious about this because one guy said and i wrote this quote down basically it's chat gpt with legs and what he said was when chat <laughs> when chat gpt walks up to you and asks you why you never said thank you for those pictures of dogs it made for you <laughs> that's gonna be a bit of a problem i'll be so, fine <laughs> me too i always thank them i always i, I always thank always chat, thank and... chat gpt I always say tell thank them, you. you know, yeah, I don't, I I don't use it that much, but I enjoy it once in a while. <laughs> and yeah. So what are your guys' thoughts on this? I mean, look at how fast this is moving. If you think of the things we've talked it's about so in the fast. past shows, I mean, that's already obsolete. It's what like we talked about month. a few shows ago. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. on and on and on. Mm -hmm. It's guys. surpassed already. $2 billion, oh, over $2 billion. They can do anything exponential growth is just that <laughs> exponential and it's going to get into a realm that we don't understand again society mm -hmm. debating mm -hmm. over uh gas stoves and trying to figure out you know mm -hmm. basic things right at what point do we okay. consider these entities like th that they need rights at what point do we start treating them politely as we would want to be treated these are questions mm -hmm. that i think are that are, will not have an answer before they get to that point and, uh, you know, all joking aside, I know it's like, hey, whatever, robots, I'm on your side. But at what point do they start to have feelings and what are feelings? So True. Yeah. very interesting space True. we're going to be in. Well, think about it, right? Human beings, right? We are electricity, right? We are connections. We are, you know, that's all about it. And you, you think you've got, you know, what's the neurons and dendrites and all that stuff. But you think of the connections and how we are basically like giant batteries in a way. So look at the technology. Why can't they somehow simulate feelings and emotions at some point? Again, electrical mm -hmm. connections, right? So it's very possible. <clears throat> Faye, what, you, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think that things are going way too fast, just like we mm -hmm. were talking about so many just smaller parts of this over the last month or so, and look where we've came. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's going to be next week? What's the next thing that we're going right. to, to hear? Yeah, right. it's, uh, it is scary um, having them being able to create their own tools, and once they have a brain and can feel and all of that put together, mind-blowing. Yeah. I mean, I, I appreciate advancement and I appreciate certain things. Um, um, this is, you know, and this is it's not so much, okay, this is not so much a spoiler, but um, with that show we were talking about, um, at one point in it, there is a human brain that is sent off into the space in hopes that the aliens will pick it up and rebuild the person's body and they will, you know, I won't go into more than that, but they'll be able to communicate that way. Um, and I think about that. Think about cloning technology. You know what? There are people, I think when I, when you lose people in your life, you, you either they move away, they pass away, you miss them, you know, things like that. And, and you think about how much you miss people, right? So when people pass mm -hmm. away, like it was, um, that really uploaded that TV show, which is really cool. Upload. Where, yeah. yeah. Upload. Yeah. Check mm -hmm. out Upload guys. That's such a fun show. And, That's you really know, basically when you pass away and then if you if you've purchased a contract in advance with them they will you will live in a virtual life basically after that which is incredible yep. but they also had the episode they were showing that okay but you can also be downloaded into a cloned body so they clone your body <laughs> and then they mm -hmm. re-download you back into your body 
And I thought about that. How wonderful would it be that the people that you no longer have in your life who have passed away, you could bring them back, right? I mean, that's amazing. Right. So that kind of thing, I I'm I love that. I love that idea, right? Mm-hmm. But, and I love the idea of artificial life, artificial intelligence. I love all of that. It's it's amazing to me. But I'm also a little afraid of that. Um, do you guys mm-hmm. have any thoughts out there, Ark? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, you hit on something that, that Johnny mentioned that I and Babe mentioned and you mentioned actually uh, about emotions. Like uh, mm-hmm. there's a concern like when AI gets emotions and stuff. But that's I think hits on something. There's always three fundamental categories and areas of discovery: the known knowns, the known unknowns, and the unknown unknowns. And with that in mind, the idea of them developing emotions is predicated to the idea that the kind of emotions that humans and animals experience, like love, joy, uh, happiness, anger, fear, this spectrum of emotions is mm-hmm. the end all be all. And I'm, this is a, a metaphysical argument that I have no evidence to support. This is just speculative completely. But what if there's emotions that exist outside of what biological emotions would exist as? And what would that mean if, you know, artificial, you know, intelligence oh, starts wow, processing yeah. emotions that we literally don't have the, the, the physical infrastructure Capacity. in our biology Capacity, to process? Yeah. And what would that mean for what yeah. kind of thoughts that oh. they would experience? Oh, my oh, God. I never thought really about that. That's very deep. But, Mm-hmm. But yeah. what evidence well, think that, about that, that it this way. Mm-hmm. There's wow. intelligence with ants. I saw a video where ants were actually forming a toe to tow one of the things they had wanted to bring back to the hive and eat. So like maybe mm-hmm. whatever other aliens and maybe it's like you're you're totally right. Like there's not even a word for the emotion they're feeling. And then maybe maybe nothing else has emotions. Maybe that's just a thing we came up with here that we evolved that doesn't really it helps us survive longer so we developed you know emotions so who knows like mm-hmm. if, if they even have any at all or what ones they could get maybe they'll have more that's a great point yeah well and let me do this real quick we're going to continue this conversation but we are close to the end of the stream so before we quit we end up with that i want to say thank you uh to everybody who watches the stream and the replays and everything i want to say thank you to all of you for being here um and also remind you to come saturday uh for the pandemonium of fear to find out about uh, acting, building, all that kind of cool stuff. Uh, and then I also wanted to uh, remind everyone to go Someone's out and be a good human divine. this week. <laughs> yeah, D, honey, we can hear you, babe. Um, and thanks for your pin number. Let me just jot that down right now. <laughs> and so so um, I just want to thank everybody and remind you to be good humans when you get out there this week to yourself and to others. Um, Faye, Johnny, anything quickly before we continue on with the conversation? No, just uh, we'll see you back here every week, same time, same place. Thank you for coming today. <laughs> Thank you Johnny? for coming and reach out to that person who maybe you don't call as much. Reach out to that family member and make that connection. And I wish you all a very yeah. good week and thank you. For- yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I second that. All right. So that's so thank you so much for that. But let's continue on with this conversation uh, because mm-hmm. Ark brought up a really interesting point. What if, what if there are emotions that we are? And listen, we all know that's human crazy. beings. I know some human beings. I don't believe they have emotions, quite frankly. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I would think that AI, you know, they want to make they want to make the robots that are going to take care of our elders that will be companions for people. I mean, all that, which I think is amazing because that is necessary. And because there are so mm-hmm. many people in the world today who are over the, the people who care, there's not enough of them and they're overwhelmed. Believe me, it's that. But the people who don't care and the people who you, you would think are, you know, autom- automatons who have no emotion. Mm-hmm. It would be nice to, I'd rather have a robot with emotions programmed in than a human being that is not kind or doesn't have that kind of capacity to be empathetic True. and caring, you know? Um, Faye, what are your thoughts on that? Well, definitely. I mean, if you're you're expecting humans to be caring, you're expecting them to have empathy. And when they have a lack thereof, it is it throws you way off. It's not something you're expecting with a robot having it being programmed. It would be just always there. It would always be a constant. You could always count on it. I think that's pretty Mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does anyone have any other thoughts uh, on that? I can't tell. Okay. Lee, are you jumping to chat or? Yeah. Uh, Yeah, I think it will. It's never going to be able to feel, I don't think, in my opinion. Uh, But I do think that it will be able to simulate, uh, you know, feelings and. Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. Simulation. That's true. Yeah. It will be very, very close to a human, but it won't be able to feel. 
Oh yeah, yeah. I would. I, I'd take it though. I would. You know, I would. I would take it in the world today after after the pandemic. You know, look what it's done to a lot of people. Everybody has, <clears throat> has changed, <clears throat> and it's really affected some people and and who they are as human beings. And uh, you know what? I would take the uh, the um, simulated um, you know compassion from an android over some of that because yeah. a lot of people have lost their way since this has happened, and a lot of people are jaded. And there's just you know. We need to find our way back, basically. And I don't know, maybe they can help bridge that gap and help us all find our way back. I don't know. Anybody else have any thoughts mm-hmm. on this? I know, Trey, you're jumping up. Okay, good. Trey? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, I was just saying, this, the whole AI robot in your home, like, it reminds me of a Disney movie back um, mm. when I was a kid. It's called, it was called Smart House. And it's literally this oh, computer... It's a literally a robot like computer generate and it literally got emotion, discovered emotions after mm-hmm. knowing that family and it generated a hologram of itself, like and it Ooh. literally like took over the house. So I'm like, if we have robots in our house and it, the more and more time that it spends with you, that robot spends with you, it's gonna get to Learns know from you. you. And you get to know all kind of Trey. things about you. And mm-hmm. Yeah. I saw, I'm just like, wow. Well, I've seen, I've point, seen some Trey. other shows. It, well, I've seen some other shows. It interestingly may, may enough, though. say, mm-hmm. oh, go ahead. we actually already have, everybody already has one in their home. If you have a cell phone, you could technically mm-hmm. already have the AI on your phone. Or if you've got a, I'm not going to mm-hmm. say the, the G word, because then it's going to start asking or me the, the weather word. and telling me the weather <laughs> yeah. or the a word but yeah. guess what they're already in our yeah. homes and all we need them yeah. for them is a way to physically manifest themselves so wow. it's i think it's our wow well i've seen That's i've true. seen some of the other shows they've had on where the ai falls in love with the person you know and gets ven- mm-hmm. you know vindictive to their significant others and things like that or, or locks them in the house the smart home locks them in the house and i mean yep. there's a lot of you know that that is something that i find a little you know, unnerving. I would, I mean, it'd be great. Smart homes. Yeah. Okay, great. And, and, you know, the people that like to have them and have the money for them and spend them, that's great. Have a good time. But you know what? There's also that part that they can, they can be hacked. I mean, what happens if somebody hacks your home or hacks stuff? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a really frightening prospect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. No. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Ark, Ark, what do do you want? What do you want to add to that? So, I mean, let's also uh, take another uh, take on, you know, emotional, um, true emotional, you know, AI. And let's just put it on the human spectrum of, let's say that that is the limit of it. Joseph Stalin, as horrible as he was, said, once said something that was very, very, very profound, that a million deaths is, just, one death is a tragedy, a million deaths is a statistic, right? And right. Our, when we hear, when someone we love dies, you know, it, it's horrendously tragic. But when you hear this uh, of a million deaths, our brains literally don't have the biological infrastructure to process what a million deaths is. And I mean, that's a perverse blessing because I mean, that I, I couldn't even process what that would be like if AI does develop emotion. We sometimes think of it, you know, in a terrifying, you know, dystopian fear like Terminator. What if it's a moral, you know, AI and it actually then does have the ability to process, you know, a million deaths and all the tragedy of human history? So there's a lot of like complex moral, metaphysical, you know, implications. I mean, if we do create, you know, artificial life. And it now actually does have the bandwidth capacity to like fully comprehend the aggregate of human history. I don't know how I feel about that. You know, just that like, what would that be like for that living, you know, conscious thing to be able to experience all the impossible spectrums of you know human, you know, joy and suffering throughout you know the six thousand years of recorded history. So, kind mm-hmm. of a depressing place to go. But I mean, that's also a potential um, a known unknown. You know, what would that mean for it if it was you know emotionally aware like we are yeah that's a no, that's great true. point and what decisions yeah. would that ai make based upon that seeing all that we may try to make mm-hmm. decisions that it may perceive we don't understand or maybe it's not even perceived that i mean maybe we just don't get what it's trying to do at the- no well they you know and the thing too is if they see some of the horrors of the, of the past i mean that's the thing too when when you know they may look at us and go wait a second you guys are destroying yourselves look at the earth look at the planet look at the resources look at how how human beings can just kill and and hurt and destroy mm-hmm. other human beings i mean children as long as what was that back bank robbery were those kids like i forgot what they said they were 14 i can't see i can't remember the youngest bank robbers that they had that were just in the news these kids and and mm. look at that 
you know, children who are nine years old are, are killing people. I mean, it's, it's, it's gross. I mean, it's horrible. So if I were an alien race and I came here, I'd be like, oh my God, you know, we should wipe you off the face of existence because you guys suck. Because quite frankly, <laughs> the fact that we, an entity has the capacity to harm another, that in and of itself is, is horrible. And that would be basis for judgment from an alien race. I mean, they wouldn't even care to about the totally. good. Totally. Yeah, they like, could hey, get here you and know say, what? humans, you're out, that. capybaras, you're good, camels, yeah. you're all right, you know, <laughs> like, but humans, that's yeah. it, you're gone, you know, yeah. and, and it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, and I can't, you know what, I can't say I blame them, I mean, if there was, if there was, you know, a, 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 an alien race and their job was to go throughout all the galaxies, and they're kind of the policing all the Earths, you know, and all the different planets and different things like that, I... Honestly, you know, I couldn't, I don't know what to say about that because I, frankly, there's some really horrible stuff that needs to be out of this world. But then the thing is the the good that's in this world too. I mean, does that outweigh it? I mean, are they going to notice that? Would they see the good? Would they see the compassionate people? I think that, yes, we're full of compassion. We are, we are capable of that. But I think the idea is that we are capable of both. And that's where it's, it's debatable. If we were only capable of being compassionate, then there's no problem. But if a compassionate mm -hmm. per person who lives their life a certain way and there's something that triggers them and suddenly they take a life, they be, you know, they change, they, they lose their empathy, something can happen to a person and traumatize them enough to change who they are. I think that right there is the deciding factor that there is the possibility of a, of a 180, of a light switch, you know, because we're capable of being good, but also something can turn us into a negative space. I think that's where mm -hmm. that would lie. So I don't know. Anybody else have any thoughts out there on that? No? Okay. All right. Well, guys, I tell you what, why don't we go ahead and uh, we'll close that up there. And uh, okay. we will now head over, those of you that wish to accompany us, to uh, Psychedelic Karaoke. A little groovy karaoke action going on. So I would love everybody to come over there and watch the singers and get up and sing yourself. It would be fantastic. So thank you, guys. And uh, we'll be throwing some portals here pretty soon. Woohoo! <laughs>